have really thrown everything at this campaign. Voters stuck with the Nationals and turned away from Labor in favour of minor parties and independents. The Nats are back. Yeah. The Nats are back. We will uh, do some, some really genuine soul searching about where to from here. Uh, Upper Hunter is a state by-election. What Labor's going to have to look at is themselves. You can't just replace the, the jockey, the horse is broken. I say we talk the talk but don't walk the walk. If you want to allocate state results on federal seats, I'd ask you to have a look at Western Australia and have a look at Queensland. The responses to the weekend by-election in the New South Wales state seat of Upper Hunter contained the usual run of claims on such occasions about what the election result is supposed to tell us about broader political trends. This particular by-election also had the added spice of being in a coal seat, when coal remained such a contentious issue for many voters. But the first thing you need to know about the Upper Hunter result is that the by-election saw votes splattered all over the place among the 13 candidates vying for 56,000 votes. The second thing you need to know is that the two major parties managed to pick up just over half the total primary votes between them. These were the primary votes at the previous state election in 2019, where the shooter's candidate was the best performer among the minor parties. The two major party candidates from the Nationals and Labor managed to attract 62.6% of the first preference vote between them. This time, the combined vote for minor parties surged, with One Nation and moderate independent Kirsty O'Connell joining the field, eating some of the shooters' lunch. But look at the combined vote for the two majors, 62.6% last time, just 51.5% this time. In other words, half of voters did not vote for a major party. What's more, the optional preferential voting system in New South Wales saw 63% of voters not give preferences to other parties, meaning a huge number of votes went to the minor parties and stayed there. Amidst all the noise, there are a few things that stand out. The Nationals, who have held the seat for 90 years, suffered a small drop in their primary vote to around 31%. And we knew it was tough. Labor has lost a quarter of its supporters since the last state election, crashing to just 21.3% of the primary vote. Independent Kirsty O'Connell, who was the only candidate calling for a move away from coal, picked up almost 9% of the vote. And that raises the whole question of what role coal actually played in the seat and what that means for federal Labor. Maverick veteran Labor MP Joel Fitzgibbon was certainly framing the result as a warning to his party today. I will say this, I won't stick around uh, if the Labor Party doesn't wake up to itself. But his Labor colleague in the adjoining seat of Shortland, Pat Conroy, begs to differ. I think Mr Fitzgibbon is deeply ill-informed about uh, what is going on. I think every time he opens his mouth, he hurts the Labor Party. The single biggest commitment the National Party made was to cancel a $200 million coal mine uh, that Shenhua was proposing. We were running a great coal miner in Jeff Drayden. We got a swing towards us in significant uh, coal towns. The contest at the next federal election will be largely decided in the resources states of Queensland and Western Australia. Labor believes a number of Queensland seats, including Flynn, where LNP MP Ken O'Dowd is not recontesting, are in play as possible wins. The coalition argues that on the basis of Saturday's state results, it may be able to pick up three federal Hunter Valley seats from Labor. But if there is a lesson from Saturday's by-election, it may ultimately be that it is another example of the power of incumbency outweighing all else. And if that is the case, it's not good news for Labor. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.